Good day, teachers and students. Welcome to our lesson. I am Sir Christopher Lamaca, your math teacher. In today's video, I will be discussing the Western classical plays and operas in different eras. So without further ado, let's start. To begin with, here are our objectives for today's lesson. The first one, describe the different theatrical forms in Western classical plays and operas. Second, compare the characteristics Western classical plays and operas. The third one, reflect on and derive the mood, idea, or message emanating from selected plays and opera in Western classical periods. Create own play script using different theatrical forms. Show the influences Western classical plays to Philippine plays. Recognizes the uniqueness of each theatrical forms. And the last one, be a person that is mindful of the importance of plays and opera. So those are our objectives for this lesson. Again, um, this lesson is all about the Western classical plays and opera. So dito, i-discuss natin yung iba't ibang um, what is this? Parang development din ano, ng operas. And yun nga, yung mga stage play, ganyan, sa iba't ibang era. Like, we're going to start from Greek era, the Romantic, Medieval, then jump tayo into Renaissance, Baroque, and last one is the Neoclassical period. Then right after that, i-discuss din natin yung mga famous playwrights, and of course, our very own Filipino playwrights. But before that, let's proceed first to the different eras and different uh, what are this different theatrical forms in different eras so we have here the first one is what I said earlier Greek and European theater we're going to jump to Roman then medieval Renaissance Baroque and neoclassical theater so let's discuss first the Greek and European theater so before that let's unlock all the key terms or uh, important keywords that we're going to discuss in this topic. So we have here in Greek and, A and European theater. In ancient theater terms, we have the first one, theatron. This is the theater building. Then number two, we have here the theater. This is a large open air structures constructed on the slopes of a hill has three elements. So, yung theater natin, meron tatlong elements. Huwag kakalimutan that the first is the orchestra. The second one is the skin or that is a Greek word na nun, kung saan nakuha natin yung salitang scene. And the last element of theater is the audience. And the third um, word to unlock is paradox, which means the side entrance. So, this is an example of a Greek theater. This is Epidaurus, you know? So, kung mapapansin ninyo yung kanyang design, ayan, makikita ninyo that uh, katulad nung description that it is in a slope of a hill, and at the same time, pansinin din ninyo yung kanyang pinakang structure, ano, open, yung kanyang um, pinakang structure, or yung kanyang pinakang place, no? And, ayan, this are the bench, now, it can occupy up to 15 to 20,000 of audience. So, yun yung isang element natin. Then, we have here the orchestra. And, of course, itong side entrance na may kita ninyo dito sa gilid, those are the paradox na tinatawag. So, that is an example of a Greek theater. That is Epidaurus. Then, next one, proceed tayo sa characteristics of the Greek and European theater. The first characteristics, of course, it began in ancient Greece. It is done during festivals honoring their gods. And one of the most famous theater during that time or play is the cult of Genesis. So, kung ano natin, uh, what is this? Kung titingnan natin no, yung mga Greek mythologies. So, si Genesis is the god of wine and fertility. And during that time, no Greek period, so yung kanilang mga operas or yung kanilang mga plays is 
it was inspired no dun sa mga culture nila and at the same time for example yung mga events like maybe binyagan o di kaya may harvest yung mga ganyan so those are some of the themes na meron yung kanilang place and apparatus na then the well-known Greek playwrights kapag sinabi nating Greek plays no ito talaga agad yung mga playwrights na maririnig natin which is yung pinakasikat Sophocles, Euripides and Aeschylus and we have the three types of drama which are the tragedy, the comedy and the satire. So yun yun. Yun yung ating tatlong types of drama, tragedy, comedy and satire na nagbloom nung Greek and European theater. So dun muna tayo sa tragedy. So dun sa tragedy it means tragos or goat and ode. This etymology is linked with the practice of the ancient Genesis cult. This is the most admired type of play. So among those three types of drama, we have tragedy, comedy, and satire. So etong tragedy, ito yung pinakang gusto talaga, no? or parang pinakang binibigyang pansin na type of play during the Greek and European theater. It dealt with tragic events with unhappy ending. So yun naman kagad yun ay isip natin when we say tragedy. No, ang siguro ang unang kwento na papasok sa isip natin is none other than yung pinakang sikat ni William Shakespeare which is Romeo and Juliet na kung saan that is a tragic story where the main characters which is Romeo and Juliet is parehas na matay no? so nagkaroon ng unhappy ending yun nga downfall of the main character so that is parang the main concept of tragedy there is a lot of um, sad events or tragic events so one of the most famous um, playwright during that time is Thespis and he was the first actor and the one who introduced the use of mask he is called the father of tragedy so during that time or dito sa Greek and European theater dito pinakang unang nagamit yung mask no or yun nga yung maskara dahil um, that time kapag ka merong mga plays for example ang play is tragedy ang maximum na character lang nagaganap or actor dun sa stage is tatlo lang okay so yung mga um, actors talaga that time is nagmamultay tas talaga or parang multi character like for example if the first scenario is you are a warrior then on the second scene kailangan mong mag iba ng character like magiging babae ka ganun you're just going to get the mask which is yung pambabae then isusuot mo lang then that's it ang role mo na kagad is babae so that is the importance of mask during that time so yung ano dito um, yung facial expression is hindi siya ganong nabibigyang pansin ano? unlike ngayon kapag ka meron tayo or nanonood tayo ng mga palabas ba diba? sobrang important ng facial expression pero during that time hindi nga siya importante dahil yung mas na mismo yung nagbibigay ng expression dun sa pinakang character okay so si Tespis yung kauna-una ang nag-introduce ng paggamit ng maskara and he was also considered or entitled ng the father of tragedy so next one we have here the comedy so comedy plays were derived from imitation and they have no traces of their origin and si Aristophanes wrote most of the most com- uh, wrote most of the comedy plays and dun sa kanyang mga sinulat yung Lysistrata is yung sumurvive or nakasurvive sa kanyang mga plays This is a story or humorous tale about a strong woman who led a female coalition to end the war in Greece. We have here Cyclops. It was an adventurous comedy by Euripides. The next one we have the satire. So ito naman, ang genre naman ito of an ancient Greek drama that preserves the structure and characters of a tragedy. So pumapasok na. No? yung pinakang parang sad events or sad or tragic events ng tragedy pero ang pinagkaiba niya it is um, adopting a happy atmosphere and a rural background so there are satire plays by Aeschylus that seems to make more sense 
as the second play of the group. So some of his plays are the Spix in his Teban trilogy, Proteus in his Orestia, and are his other satir plays. Um, Pratinas of Phileus was the first to produce a satir play at Athens in the 70th Olympiad. The next one is yung orchestra. So, ito naman, ito naman yung three elements of theater building yung sinabi ko sa inyo kanina, na di ba? We have three. The first one is orchestra, the second one is the skin or the scene, and the last one is yung tinatawag nating audience. So, dun muna tayo sa orchestra. So, orchestra is a large, circular, or rectangular area at the center part of the theater. So, yung pinakita kong picture kanina, yung Epidaurus, May kita ninyo doon that sa gitnang parte is, di ba, meron doong, uh, what do this, uh, parang circular, di ba? So, yun yung tinatawag nating orchestra. Okay, so that is the center part of the theater na kung saan ginaganap, yun nga, yung mga plays, yung pagsayaw, yung religious rites and the acting is nangyayari. Parts are theatron, this is the viewing place on the slope of a hill or where the audience of a Greek tragedy sat. to view the performance. So, yun yung teatron natin. Then, the skin or the stage and the parados which is the side entrance. The next element of theater building is the skin or scene. So, this is the building or stage where performances are held. Of course, this is the main place no, na tinatawag. This is a Greek word, yung skin na tinatawag from which we get the word scene. During the 5th century, the skin was a non-permanent building placed at the back of the orchestra. So, yun yung ating scene. And the last element we have is the audience. Of course, it is a group of individuals who get together for a purpose of seeing a performance. So, if we are going to watch a um, theater or an opera, then we are the audience, right? So, the interaction between the performer and the audience is the essence of theater. So, yung live performance at yung reaction of the audience, yun yung um, parang pinakang sinasabi nila na pinakang essence ng theater. What will be the reaction of the audience? Ano yung parang magiging pinakang labas ng theater? So, ayan, yun yung the main essence or major essence of theater. So, we have here. The four types of masks used in Greek plays. So, dito, bibigyan din lang natin yung Oedipus Rex, which is one of the theaters during the Greek and ancient times. No? So, mass, the use of mass acts to advance the universality of the themes and dramatic impact of events. It also wants to keep the audience from being distracted by the actual and physical attributes of the actor. So, that is the importance of mass. So, ito yung apat na ginamit, ano? So, the first one we have here, Oedipus, wears a gold mask with exaggerated deep, empty eye sockets. Next one is Jocasta, the wife of Laos and modern mother of Oedipus. Her mask expression depends on the scene of the play. Third one, Antigone and Smene, so they wear white faces, dark under the eyes, and sad looking. And the last but not the least is Crayon. This is the brother-in-law of Oedipus. His mask expresses angriness with a crown. So those are the four types of masks used in Greek play, which is Oedipus Rex. Okay? The next one, and the elements and principles of the Greek play. The first element we have are the actors. Siyempre, hindi pwedeng mawala kasi sila yung bubuhay ng mga theater ano, and play. So, ayun, may limit nga. yung bilang ng actors natin sa stage during that time. So, kapag tragedy ang kanilang ipapalabas, that is limited only to three actors. Kapag comedy naman, is five actors. The next element we have is the voice. So, delivery is more on declamatory. The third one is facial expression. Again, as what I said earlier, this is not important because actors wear their masks. And that mask will give them the emotion and the main uh, what it is, parang uh, yung gusto nilang ipalabas ano, or i-depict dun sa kanilang play. Then, next element we have is the movement. So, this is more unconventionalized, stylized, or symbolic gestures 
like in mimetic dance. Music, flute is accompanied for drama. So, flute yung kanilang ginagamit. For the venue, we have your auditorium on the slope of Acropolis with a panoramic landscape. And of course, the audience, no spectators standing or seated on the slope of Acropolis. And the difference between the audience today and the audience during that time, the audience during that time can express their opinion noisily, as in they can um, express their um, what are these comments, opinions about the play or the theater, no? And you can criticize the play live, no? So, ibig sabihin, they can actually express themselves on kung ano na yung nararamdaman nila dun sa pinapanood nila. Then, after the Greek and European theater, let's jump to the Roman theater. So, ano nga ba yung pinagkaiba nung itsura ng Greek theater sa Roman theater. So, kung napansin ninyo kanina yung picture ng Greek theater, di ba, open pa yung kanyang likod ng stage and um, semicircle yung kanyang parang pinakang theatron which is doon nga nauupo yung mga audience, okay? So, dito naman sa Roman theater, nagkaroon na na or na-enclose na yung kanilang hall or yung kanilang theater, no? Uh, theater hall. So, ibig sabihin, wala pang bubong, pero yun nga, um, wala na siyang ibang, or kumbaga, hindi na talaga siya open yung pinakang likod. So, meron na siyang harang. So, for the varied art forms, dito, street, theater, acrobatics, staging of comedies of Plautus, highly elaborated tragedies of Seneca. So, sa Roman theater, more on tragedies naman yung kanilang binigyang focus. Although meron pa rin namang comedy pero um, most or major of the plays or theater during that time is tragedy yung pinakang tema. Okay? So, Chamber Pompey was the first permanent non-wooden theater in Rome. Structure similar to the Teatron of Athens. So, ang pinaka-inspiration nun nung ginawa yun is the Teatron of Athens. So again, yung Pompeii was the first permanent non-wooden. So it is made of hard materials talaga. Then the characteristics, of course, it started in ancient Rome in the 3rd century B BC. It has varied and interesting forms such as highly verbal festival. So these are the forms or concepts or themes of the Roman theater. Highly verbal festival performances of street theater, acrobatics, staging of comedies of Plautus, and of course, the elaborated tragedies of Seneca. So, according to the Roman historians, the Etruscan actors, which is the group of actors during that time, were the first experienced theater. The next one, and Roman drama began with the plays of Livius and Jonicus. Ludi Publici is an ancient public games and spectacles, athletic competitions and exhibitions of the area and theater. And yun nga, yung Pompeii or Theater of Pompeii is one of the first permanent theater in Rome. Then, usual themes of the Roman theater are chariot races, gladiator fights, and public execution. So, if you are a big um, wanted no, during that time, or malaki yung bounty sa ulo mo, yung mga ganyan. So, yung execution or yung pagbitay is ginagawa nila talaga public. So, comedy plays are popular too in the Roman theater. And the difference between the Greek and Roman theater is the women were allowed to perform on stage sa Roman theater. Then, one of the most famous theater during that time is the Carmen by none other than George Bizet. So, dito ang costume din sa Carmen is yung sa women, Eh, they are look like a Spanish dancer with ruffles and flowers clip on the hair, tight fitting upper dress and chaleco. So that is the uh, what are this? Parang pinakang itsura na no? ng costume ng babae dito sa Carmen. Then for the men, they are dressed as or they were dressed as a special or Spanish soldier. Next one. So, for the music and videos of Carmen, so one of the world's most popular operas that was first performed at the Opera Comic in Paris, is four acts with music written by the French composer, Georges Bizet. 
So that is The Carmen by George Bizet. Then after the Roman Theater, we have here the Medieval Theater. So kung babalikan natin yung topic natin sa music nung first quarter, kapag sinabi natin Medieval Theater, di ba? There is a conflict between the government and the church. Uh, merong chaos, kumbaga parang ang gulo-gulo pa, no? Pero dito, sa Medieval Theater, hindi pa allowed yung mga theater plays during that time. So ano lang yung allowed, no? So performances were done in markets public places and festivals. So yung jugglers, puppeteers, storytellers, dancers, singers and other theatrical acts were done from town to town. So yun nga parang dito natin nakuha yung pinakang concept ng fiesta. So churches in Europe stage their performances during Easter Sundays with biblical stories and events. So the main um theme of the medieval theater is more on biblical events. No, so, yun yung pinaka-inspiration. Some plays, <laughs> some plays were held outside the church because of the portrayal of the devil and hell. Example of this is the mystery of Adam. So, after the medieval theater, let's jump to the Renaissance theater. So, dito naman sa Renaissance theater. And So, let's look at the characteristics. Public theaters were developed all like the Commedia dell'arte and the elaborate mass. So ito yung pinakasumikat na during the Renaissance theater. The Commedia dell'arte is an Italian comedy and a humorous theatrical per- presentation performed by professional players who traveled in the troops. And for the elaborate mass, this is a dramatic entertainment consisting of pantomime, dancing dialogue, and song. And sometimes, players wear masks. And the last one is the proscenium Theater. This is the metaphorical vertical plane, metaphorical vertical plane of space in the theater. So this is an, exa- this is an example of a Renaissance Theater. This is the proscenium Theater. Okay, so may kita ninyo yung development, ano? nung itsura ng kanilang theater. So, from the first one na meron silang open area, meron silang side entrance, no, and talagang um, open yung kanilang theater hall. No, then, bigla nagkaroon pagdating ng Roman theater, naging closed siya, pero wala pang bubong. Then, pagdating ni uh, Renaissance period, ayan, nagkaroon tayo ng tinatawag na Persinium Theater. Then, this is the return of classical Greek and Roman arts and culture. So, dito binabalik nila ano, yung parang mga pinakang kultura or nakagawian during the Greek and Roman times. Morality plays and university drama were formed to cre- recreate Athenian tragedy. Public theaters were developed, which is the Commedia dell'arte, for example. Ano, an Italian comedy and the humorous theatrical presentation performed by professional players who traveled in troops. So, Queen Elizabeth was one of the prominent supporters of theater. So, ma- ah, kung babalikan din natin yung topic natin sa music, no, pagdating ng Renaissance Theater, it is the age of rebirth. Parang from chaos is naging maayos yung lahat. Ano? So, si Queen Elizabeth then is pumayag sa isa sa mga sikat na music composer during that time to use the printing press. Yung printing press is an invention during that time, ano? na kung saan napiprint nila ng mas marami o napoproduce nila ng mas marami yung copy ng kanilang music. So, ganun din kasupportive si Queen Elizabeth pagdating sa theater. The known play during that time is The Tragedy of Garbodok, which is Ferex and Porex, made by Thomas Norton and Thomas Sackville. They are an Eng- or this is an English play that was first performed during the Christmas celebration in 1562 before Queen Elizabeth. So, William Shakespeare was the famous actor and poet of this period. He is also called as the England's national poet and the bard of Avon. He is the writer of Romeo and Juliet, Hamlet, Cleopatra, Julius Caesar, King Lear, and Macbeth. So, those are some of his famous na mga writings or mga, uh, what it is, um, lyric, uh, literary artworks. Comedies were common in this era, in the Renaissance period, and dealt with life in London after the fashion of Roman New Comedy. So, ballet was performed in public at this time. 
and is a formalized form of dance that originated from Italian Renaissance courts. One of the most famous ballet dances is the Ballet de Polonais, the first formal court ballet, a true form of royal entertainment, and was commissioned by Queen Catherine de' Medici. So after the Renaissance, we have the Baroque Theater. So sa Baroque naman, dito unti-unti mas lalong na-develop yung um, what else is, parang pinakang gamit nila no, sa theater. So this is marked by the use of technology in current Broadway or commercial plays that until now is existing. Yung kanilang mga na-invento during that time. No? So crew uses machines for special effects and scene changes with the use of ropes and pulleys. So dito rin nag-umpisa gamitin yung mga curtains. No? Like for example, um, magpapalit sila ng scene. Oh, diba? So sasara yung kurtina. Then after nila mag-prepare, bubukas ulit yung kurtina. Then tada, that is a new scene already. So doon nila na, ano yun, na discover or na invent. So the technology affected the content of the performed pieces. Use of the theatrical technologies was seen in the films like Vatel, Farinelli, and in the different stage productions of Arpeus by Claudio Monteverdi, which is one of the most famous composers then no, during the Baroque period. So, dito, characteristics of Baroque theater, actors wear masks. In costume naman, men wear a uh, loose floor-length poncho with pleated shoulders, and for the women, they wore drop ro or drape robes. Stage Ionic Order column design with corners and moldings on the top. It is elevated by five step risers at the center and it has a, plas a platform in front near the audience. So this is an example of a Baroque stage. So as what I said earlier, my Kitanino, they have their own backdrops, they have the curtain or curtains. No, and yung actors is not limited to 3 or 5 then the last period that we're going to discuss is the neoclassical theater so dito naman this is a movement where the styles of Roman and Greek societies influenced the theater arts and characterized by its grandiosity so dito yung costumes and sceneries were highly elaborated they are using costumes for the boys or for the men they are using the sh uh, chiton na tinatawag ano so, yun yung parang pinakang main costume during that time. Main concept of the place was to entertain and teach lessons. And dito, kung doon sa Baroque period, ang na-discover is yung paggamit ng pulleys, ng curtains, ng um, backgrounds. Dito naman is yung lights and sound effects. They, um, they help to intensify the mood and message of each scene and enhance dramatic experience. Diba kahit naman pag nanonood tayo ng mga horror movies, parang sa tunog pa lang magugulat ka na kagad eh, diba? Kahit hindi mo nakita talaga yung nakakagulat. So, ganun yung parang pinakang nabibigay ng sound effect and ng light effect. Diba kapag ka nakakatakot, nagpapatay sindi yung ilaw, yung mga ganyan. So, kapag light naman yung mood, so, ayan, parang palaging merong araw, yung mga ganun. So, that is the importance of lights and sound effects. Change of scenery and backdrops are also introduced in the neoclassical theater. Use of well-known pair of happy and sad na. So, ito yung ano, nakikita nating symbol. No? ba sa art? Ito yung nakikita nating maskara na dalawa. Yung isa masaya, yung isa malungkot. So, yun yun. Dito yun nagsimula sa neoclassical theater. So, it was used to symbolize the theatrical arts tragedies portrayed complex and faithful lives of the upper classes and royals and for the comedies naman are all about or nakapokus sa lower ranks of society then last part of our discussion are the famous playwrights so dito i-discuss muna natin yung mga um, playwrights natin na talagang sikat na sikat ano then after that is yung ating very own Filipino playwright so the first famous playwrights during that time is Victor Hugo so he was a great he was the greatest and best known French writer, a poet, novelist, and dramatist of the Romantic movement. His noted works are Le Miserable and Notre Dame de Paris or The Hunchback of Notre Dame. So that is Victor Hugo. Next one is George Bizet. Actually see si George Bizet is mas nakilala siya sa kanya mga musical compositions. 
na pero meron siyang isang play or theater na pinakang sumikat which is yung Carmen nga yung didiscuss natin kanina na so the symphony in C major is his first symphony he is a French composer and romantic pianist who is also known for his opera Carmen is the most popular among his works which is a downfall story of Don Jose or tragic story of Don Jose he is a native soldier who is seduced by the charms of the sizzling gypsy named Carmen after George Bizet we have here one of the most famous playwright is William Shakespeare so he was considered as the uh, most famous English actor poet and playwright he was regarded as the greatest writer and dramatist in the whole world he was also called England's national poet and the bard of Avon he was written or he has written 38 well-loved plays like the examples are Romeo and Juliet Hamlet, Midsummer, and all about uh, or ang kanyang mga themes is more on tragic talaga. So he also wrote 150 personets and two long narrative books. Next one is Sophocles, an ancient Greek, uh, Greek playwright and ang kanyang pinakang mga gawa talaga is more on tragedy. No, so ancient Greek tragedy contemporary playwright of Aeschylus and Euripides he has written 123 plays, pero yun nga, kahit sobrang dami, only 7 have survived, which are the Ajax, Antigone, the Women of Trachis, Electra, and the others. Famous tragedies he did are the Oedipus Rex and Antigone. Next one, proceed tayo on our very own famous Filipino playwrights. Of course, hindi hindi mawala. Francisco Balagtas. He was known for his um, work, which is yung Florante at Laura. Diba? So, Ito is dinidiscuss sa uh, Filipino subject every um, kung kayo is nasa second year high school or grade 8 na na tinatawag. So, he learned to write poetry from his master, none other than Jose de la Cruz, or also known on his pen, uh, pen name, which is Huseng Sisio. There was a rivalry between Balagtas and Mariano Capule over Mariano Asuncion Rivera. So, yun yung issue na nangyari noon. Kapule won the battle when he used his wealth to get Balagtas in prison. So, yun nga. Nakulong itong si Francisco Balagtas and nung siya ay nakulong, dun niya naisulat yung Florante at Laula. Laura. Laula. <laughs> so, he was also known as Francisco Baltasar. Next one is Severino Reyes, the father of the Tagalog Zerzuela. So, yung Zerzuela talaga is from Spain. Oh. Nung dumating sila dito, yun na ah, adapt natin or parang ayun nga yung parang isa sa mga nagiging paboritong palabas ng mga tao during that time so he was a Filipino writer dramatist and playwright who and who was also considered as the giant giant lang yun ah, giant of the Philippine literature his well known work sa kanyang sarsuela is yung walang sugat this is a drama set against the historical events in Bulacan during the Philippine revolution so he was also co-founded Daliwayway which is yung isa sa mga Jaya or magazine during that time, ano? Ayan, Tagalog Literary Weekly Magazine that published series of fairy tales. So, siya rin yung, ano, ano, um, uh, what it is, yung uh, kanyang mga gawa is yung mga kwento ni Lola Basyang, na So, siya rin yung sumulat nun. So, diba, napapanood din natin yun. Actually, sa Channel 7 is, uh, if I'm not mistaken, ang gumanap bilang Lola Basyang is Gloria Romero. So, yun, siya yung sumulat ng Lola Basyang or mga kwento ni Lola Basyang. The third to the last is Dr. Ricardo G. Abad. So, he is an artistic director of Tanghalang Ateneo, actor and director of over 120 productions. He directed and acted in Teatro Filipino and Tanghalang Filipino of the Cultural Center of the Philippines and the Metropolitan Theater. The last one we have is Salvador F. Bernal. He was the father of theater design in the Philippines. The first one to develop the theater design as a profession and elevate it to an art form. So he designed more than 250 productions in ballet, theater, and film. And he also received a National Artist Award or he was considered as a National Artist Award. Awardee. So, yung National Artist Award is the highest rank, no? That can, or that a Filipino artist can have. So, yun, a National Artist 
Awari. So that's it. That is our topic for this video. So thank you so much and God bless us all. Magandang buhay. So if you have any questions regarding this topic, you may comment it down in our chat or comment box or comment section. Then of course, I'm willing ako na ibigay sa inyo or bigyan kayo ng copy of this um, presentation na ginawa ako. Ano? So if you want a copy, then don't um, hesitate to message me or send me a message on my social media accounts that is written in the description below so for my FB so Christopher Lamoca then on my Twitter and Instagram is nandiyan din no, and also no, wag nyo rin kakalimutan na i-visit yung aking Facebook page which is Sir Lamoca the link is also given in the description and syempre itong ating YouTube channel don't forget to like this video share and subscribe on my youtube channel so if you have any um topic that you wanted me to discuss then don't hesitate also to drop it down in our comment section para sa susunod na mga video yun naman yung gagawin natin ng lesson okay so i will give my best to discuss it in a very easy way and Ayan, sa maiintindihan talaga natin lahat na. So, konti na lang at matatapos na yung school year natin ngayon Or ngayong 2020 to 2021 This is the first school year na nagkaroon tayo ng bagong uh, What is this? Way of learning ano? and also teaching So, nagkaroon tayo ng online classes Nagkaroon tayo ng modular, uh, modular na mga um, at least learning yung mga ganun so I know na nahirapan tayo mag adjust so I hope this video is makatulong ano, especially sa mga modular students and syempre sa mga nag online classes din no? if you miss some of your lessons so we have here um, some lessons in MAPE so this is a lesson in MAPE 9 curriculum this is western classical place and operas that you can find in the fourth quarter of this subject in grade 9. Now, so, once again, thank you so much for watching this video. Um, don't forget to click also the notification bell so that you will be updated in our videos and lessons that I'm going to upload. Continue to support, stay safe, and God bless.